Let's start by telling me a little bit about why you're interested in adopting Open Ed. Mm -hmm. So the Information Studies Department has used a textbook on information sources and have drawn the assignments from it. So a lot of the class is structured around this textbook. And it's getting to the point where it's, it's kind of out of date and I'd like to innovate a little bit with the assignments that I use and move away from having students pay $30 for a textbook for a two credit class. I really think, especially since we are librarians, there's so many information resources that are, you know, librarians share and these things are available. So I really, I'd like to move away from using this textbook that I'm asking students to pay $30 for and move towards using open resources. Is there anything that you love about the textbook? The things that I like are there's really clear definitions in the textbook for um, concepts for searching for information, evaluating information. There's some nice tables and graphical representations of that I think help students think through concepts. One thing that I don't like is I think some of the things really need to be updated and I'd like to see some more current and relevant examples for students to really sink their teeth into issues of authenticity or credibility and you know, pull things from, that are happening almost from the headlines, pull things that they have experienced. Okay. Talk to me about the outcomes and in particular pay attention to outcomes that you are worried that open education won't help you reach. Mm -hmm. My students come in and one of the first outcomes is for them to come in with a research topic turn it into a narrowed question that they could use for one project. So narrowing something down effectively and also navigating a variety of the information systems that are available to them as a college student. And so that includes navigating a catalog or information discovery systems, as well as you know navigating the web and being able to refine those types of searches. And also understanding some of the problems today in information society. Uh, I really want some current examples for them to be able to wrestle with those things of censorship and information access. How much material do you expect the students to interact with on a weekly basis? Your textbook, you said it was thirty dollars. So mm -hmm. in my head, that means it's probably a fairly narrow. It is. It's not. You're, they're not reading hundred pages a week, right? Right. How much, really, in general, how much information do you want them to have to interact with in a week, as far as getting mm -hmm. ready for their assignments? I mean, I, I would say that and it's hard to put a page count on it, but a short reading assignment, a few pages and possibly a video or something to supplement. You know, for learners that don't do as well taking information and just by reading it, I want I also want something else to supplement it. It helps when we're choosing open resources to know kind of where your students are coming from. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, for example, we talked about digital divide a little bit. Mm -hmm. How much are we dealing with that? Like when we find materials, should they be printable materials? Mm -hmm. What's your sense of that? I know it's an online class. Thank you for bringing that up. One concern I I have is that things are scoped to a community college audience and learners that come in with a, a diverse experience with you know digital literacy and yes they're here in this online classroom but I really want to make sure that things could be printed if they wanted them printed or that videos could be have captions that kind of thing to make sure that they are supported in that way some of the things that I've I've seen are just really scoped to students that are at a four-year university and I think as far as what they're creating for research products and you know, integrating multimedia that kind of things where I, I really don't think that a, lo a lot of the learners in my classroom are, are at that level or can access that kind of presentation. So talk to me about what quality is. I would say that quality in terms of the resources that I would hope to adopt or use in my class. I want things that are current, up-to-date, easily accessible, something that will give students, they'll be able to see themselves in the resources or the examples okay. that I'm bringing in. I'm going to take a look at your course outcomes and I am going to ask you to make it basically as a quick grid for me to show me what a course outcome is and what topics you think fit that outcome so that I can make sure that I'm covering all the topics that fit your outcomes. Mm -hmm. And I'll send you some resources to look at. So okay. I'll send you basically a Word document with, with links in it and a description of the resources. And then I'll ask you to make comments for me. And it'll help me if you make good comments about what you like and don't like. Okay. Because then I can narrow or expand my search as we go. I'm going to name a couple of sources today that you might want to take a look at, just to look at. And I'll put them in an email along with the summary of this meeting. So that you'll be able to kind of remember what we're working on.
The first one is Iris, and you may be familiar with Iris. It was made in Washington State. And then the other thing is the SUNY system in New York did an overall information literacy textbook. So I'll send you a link to that just okay. so you have it because it may have some of those overview concept things that I'm thinking about. And I'll admit I haven't read it in depth, but I looked at it and went, oh, okay, this is useful. Uh So I'll send that your way too, but in the meantime, I'm gonna get started on finding some more specific things that might fit in with the outcomes we have at our institution. Okay? Okay. Perfect, thank you so much.